dystopian times. Well, folks, uh, I want to jump right into the very first story. It is a somewhat new story. So for those of you who aren't aware, uh, there is a strike going on. And I always want to make sure to uh, broadcast any information I have about these strikes because I want to stand in solidarity with the workers. So uh, if you're a fan of Oreo, uh, Nabisco products, Chips Ahoy, premium crackers, be sure to avoid purchasing those products for the coming weeks. So this is from Willamette Week. It's a Oregon-based publication. They write, Oregon maker, Oreo makers in Northeast Portland launch a national strike. The labor dispute follows years of Mondelez cutting employee pensions and having its unionized workforce by closing bakeries in New Jersey and Atlanta. Now, Mondelez is actually the parent company of Nabisco, I believe. Um, and so what's happening is they are being asked to work longer hours. They're trying to uh, stiff them when it comes to wages. And there's a really incredible video from In These Times that kind of talks about this. Now, the strike is taking place in multiple states, Oregon, Colorado, and Virginia. So what I want to do is I want to play a little bit of the In These Times video because it gives us some insight and some firsthand accounts from the workers here. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look. Can be forced to working up to 60, 70 days. I've personally worked 45 days in a row with Without a day off. We want to be treated like we're people instead of like slaves. The company has never given us anything. The corporate greed is taking everything away. And we'll be out here until we can stop corporate greed. Now I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because they play some music that might get me copyright claimed. But I want to go to the stories from the workers because what they share it's shocking, but it's not necessarily surprising. Um, I'm not sure if anyone in, on the panel remembers the Frito-Lay strikes that just took place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that situation was resolved. And I say resolved in quotes because, I mean, they're still overworked and underpaid. But to a lesser extent, they get one day off per week. So, I mean, it's a small victory, but hopefully, you know, we'll have a better outcome here in this situation. So let's let's see what they're talking about here, because what what we're seeing is basically complete dehumanization, uh, common stories in a late stage capitalist society. Came with some demands in the last negotiation that were all takeaways. They wanted to take our overtime away. They wanted to put us on a seven day work schedule, 12 hour days. They currently want to change our overtime pay so that if you work all that time, you will end up eventually getting paid less for working that amount of time. Your impact gonna be about a $40,000 a year loss for all the workers across the board. They've actually closed two factories recently and, and they don't disclose where the production's going, but we know it's going to Mexico. It sucks. I just turned 55 years old. Got 37 years. With the COVID-19, I don't know who's going to hire me right now. Is everything going to Mexico? All of it. I grew up with Nabisco products. Oreo, cream and crackers, Chippehoys. I knew they were made here. I knew they were made around the corner from where I live. To see those things go to another country where people are making less pay and the company is still making billions, it's disheartening. I've been here since uh, 1987, so I guess it'd be 34, 35 years. This company has actually squeezed everything out of it they could. They don't even want us to step onto the grass of the property, so they're putting a fence up right on the property line. They're basically kicking the employees to the curb. We want the community to support us. We want America to support us. We, we don't want you to buy Nabisco products, not during our strike. When we come back to work, we want you to support Nabisco products but only Nabisco products made in America. If you read the back of the label, it will say made in America or made in Mexico or made in Canada. And we want to keep our jobs in America. We want to keep middle class. And right now they're trying to destroy it all. Well, that's basically um, the story. Um, so I usually am very skeptical of, of boycotts because they tend to not work. Like, I mean, I, I've kind of long maintained that there's no ethical consumption under capitalism. But in instances like this, I think that this is our opportunity to truly show solidarity with the workers and not cross the picket line. So did anyone want to weigh in on this situation? Because I think this is really encouraging to see more and more strikes take place across the country. 
Yeah, I think I agree with you that um, very often, you know, these sorts of boycotts don't work. But when it's coming from uh, the workers on strike themselves, that's when, you know, you should be honoring those and not when it's some sort of like, uh, like a, a pope for a political game. But it is sort of disappointing to not see like this is, <laughs> I mean, of course, I want the workers to get what they want. But this is an opportunity for like politicians to get involved, it's a it's a win for them too. So, and they could absolutely be supporting these workers, supporting you know American jobs. Could be a bipartisan effort as long as these workers, you know, you know, have their demands met. Uh, everybody wins. I, it's it's sad to see that no one's sort of like even jumping on that wagon, even if it's you know a selfish if they're doing it selfishly or out of their own self interest. It'll still <laughs> benefit the workers. It'll still bring attention to their movement. So it really is a win-win. And you know, just seeing sort of a lack of uh, uh, you know acknowledgement of it from politicians is kind of disappointing. Uh, but it's also nice, like you mentioned, the Frito uh, Lay protest and the Pepsi protests earlier. These these protests, these uh, or not protests, these uh, strikes are getting more media attention than they have in the past. Uh, especially under Trump, it was sort of uh, the news cycle was dominated by all of that. So it's nice, but it is nice to see these movements and these workers movements getting the attention that they deserve. I mean, they deserve more, but, you know, at least getting acknowledgement. Yeah, it's a, it's a good start. It's like a little bit of hopium. Um, I like what you said about politicians. Um, Dan, why don't we see more Democrats, uh, the president even, like, going there, standing in solidarity with these workers. I mean, their agenda is, I mean, they've been pushing for the PRO Act and, you know, they, they've had every excuse. You know, there's these uh, centrist Democrats, or I should say right-wing Democrats who pose as centrists or LARP as centrists. I mean, this is a PR nightmare for people like uh, Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin. If the president of the United States shows up with these workers and says, listen, this is why we need to pass the PRO Act. Why aren't my Democratic Party um, members in the Senate standing in solidarity with these workers? Like, don't you think that this is a really unique moment and a political opportunity? Like, why aren't Democrats seizing on this? Uh, yeah, obviously, it's a it's a political opportunity. And I think we're uh, uh, Ray, you're right to to tap into this. We need to uh, I, I, don't, I don't like to advocate for what other people do, but like Personally, what I want to be doing is making sure I'm spending time on things like this on my stream, you know, educating myself and others on these things. Um, but that's because, I, I, you know, I'd like to think I'm on the side of the worker and Democrats aren't. They're just another wing, I believe, of, of the, the right party, of the party on the right, of the capitalist. Um, they're not they're not pro proletariat. They're, they right. want to uh, to support their 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 uh, their capitalist overlords. Uh, um, so with that said, I, I don't know. I don't have like a huge take on this. It just seems like, okay, hello, profit motive. You're really being a pain in the ass yet again. I'd like for you to fuck off. Um, I'm sorry, can I swear? Uh, so, you, oh, geez. you have to um, say at least two curse words yeah. throughout the course of it. That's the, that's the requirement. All right, I'm going to save up the rest of them then. Um, you got you got at least one more that you have to do for sure. So I'm thinking to myself, yeah, is, is, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and echo what uh, Ray said as well. You know, I'm thinking about as I'm learning about uh, uh, Palestine and what they're uh, the you know the the occupied are saying what they're asking for, which is BDS. And I think we should BDS mandalas. We should boycott, divest, and sanction them, and um, you know, uh, all, all the above. Um, and uh, yeah, don't buy it and just just listen to them. And, and that's pretty much who I defer to when I don't know shit about shit. I defer I defer to people who know more than me.